In the aftermath of a school shooting by the hands of a trans activist, Nashville, Tennessee mourns the loss of three nine-year-old children and three teachers. And media, politicians, and social media personalities are pointing fingers in all the wrong directions, very predictably. I think it's high time we push back on these things. It's high time we stop being silent about these things. Because it's not helping anything. And in fact, it could help to speak up in the casual conversations that perpetuate these things. We're also going to talk about how parenting has taken a huge nosedive as parents gossip about their own children in the workplace and how this might not be helping anything in the social climate. I'm Jake Critcher. This is Jake's Takeaway. I want to start by saying if I get any sort of recognition, any sort of um, publicity on this video on YouTube or Instagram, I will almost certainly get taken down. Now, the, the solution to that is for you to go to, to Rumble and watch the full content there. Because they do not do what YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and all them do. They don't censor, they don't take down, they don't ban. So if you want to see everything, it'll be there. I implore you to go there on Rumble. It'll reliably be there. It's It would not shock me if I got banned or taken down on YouTube. So go to Rumble, subscribe to me there. You'll get all the same content and you'll have no fear of me being banned or removed. Well, today I have the severe discomfort and displeasure to address the Nashville, Tennessee shooting in a Christian school by the hands of a trans activist. Um, nobody wants you to know that this trans activist was... A woman identifying as a man, and that doesn't seem to matter at all. A killer is a killer. Perhaps predictably, politicians are pointing their fingers at all the wrong things, including things like inanimate objects, such as guns, and the fact that we need to change gun laws to keep this from happening. Ignoring the fact that there are no armed security guards at the school, the fact that the shooter was able to easily get in a side entrance by shooting a lock, and ignoring the fact that this could all be solved with a few armed citizens. But they waste no time at all blaming the guns themselves and pushing for gun laws when it's only been hours since the shooting. But I'm not here to talk about that. That's that's the predictable side of things. I'm here to talk about how the victims are not really the victims in some of these people's eyes. The victims are, in fact perpetuating the result of this shooter. Trans activists are, needless to say, upset. Not because one of their own has committed an atrocity against people, but because the killer has been misgendered by the police. Let's take a look at one of those tweets. Five times CNN misgendered. No correction. A mass shooting is horrible. Misgendering does not make anything better. There was also a TikTok video that was circulating around. I was unable to find the original um, content. I did look for it, um, but it is circulating around. I'm sure you may have seen it um, of a woman um, very openly upset at the at the misgendering of the killer. I will say again, it is a woman saying she's a man. Her pronouns do not matter in this scenario. But if your first reaction to a school shooting is to go onto TikTok and say, this shooting was bad, but stop yourself right there. Why is there a but? Whatever proceeds after the but does not matter. That first part is the only thing people care about. If you have to say school shooting bad, but then you're already on the wrong side. Needless to say, I don't give a flying ferret what this person's pronouns were because the only pronouns they'll be remembered for is murderer and monster. Your pronouns got you nowhere and now no one will remember your pronouns, at least not the ones you wanted them to. USA Today came out and condemned the police, uh, misgendering them as well, said officials had, quote, this is, Quote from USA Today on their Twitter page. Police on Monday afternoon said that the shooter was a transgender man. Officials had initially misidentified the gender of the shooter. Why 
does this matter? Killer. Criminal. That's all that matters. This person's pronouns are completely irrelevant. We should have no respect for this person. This person forfeited any right to be called what they want to be called. They forfeited the right to their own life by taking the life of children. And adults. Doesn't matter the age, you're still a monster. Though it takes a very special kind of monster to kill children. Also in reaction, yet another trans activist and a trans person himself, I assume it's a him because he's dressed as a woman and calling himself trans. Um, here's his reaction to it. If the, I'll tell you something, if a police officer put his hands on me for trying to be who I am, I don't care if I got shot. I'm taking a couple of transphobes with me. And I suggest you do the same. The time for debate is over. It's a waste of time. Again, not focusing on the crime of the killer, but rather the victimhood of the killer. People on the internet are blaming, uh, supposedly the shooter was a former student of this school. She targeted this school knowing that there wasn't any security guards or any armed individuals at all. And they're blaming Christians. They're blaming her parents. They're blaming legislation. And then people like this, trans activists, are in fact justifying her actions and saying that this is the time to fight, the time to push back. This is only an excerpt of her, his rather, his extremely long call to to fight in a three minute long video that's openly available on TikTok, by the way, yet another reason for that to be banned and not to let your children on there. But here's here's a real cherry on top. The sitting spokesperson of the Arizona governor, Jocelyn Berry, tweeted hours after the shooting. So no plausible deniability. It's not like this was posted within minutes of the shooting. Hours after, she obviously saw the news. She knew what was happening. But here's what she tweeted. She tweeted a GIF. Yes, it's GIF. Graphics interchange. It's it's GIF. She tweeted out, us when we see transphobes and a gif of an actress from I don't know what movie holding two pistols us when we see transphobes notice she puts herself in this us category pointing guns at transphobes needless to say this was quickly ridiculed and she um, very hastily blocked pretty much everyone's access and made her account private because there's no defending this position it is indefensible But this is the sitting spokesperson of the Arizona governor. Now, of course, they're going to try to brush this under the rug and through silence and ignoring it for long periods of time, they're hoping people are going to forget this, but we're saving receipts. People are screenshotting it. We're not forgetting this. This is someone that we put into power. This is someone that was voted in as you can say, you know, as illegitimate as it may have been. This is someone in power that you can talk to. This is someone in power you can protest against. We should be contacting, we should be calling this person, we should be calling the Arizona governor, sending letters, sending emails, and relentlessly asking for the firing of this person who is clearly advocating for violence against transphobes, quote-unquote. We can't let them ignore this problem until it goes away. This is why we're where we're at. This is why culture is being diluted by our the powers that be. They say politics are a downstream of culture, but it goes the other way too. There's been yet another tweet that's been circulating on the internet um, by an account called Pinko Scum. And uh, I would say the scum part is quite aptly named. But here's that video that's been circulating. Now, if you're honest with yourself, you know that this is not a sane person. You know that this person has some serious issues. Now, I'm not trying to say that all trans people or all trans activists are violent. Obviously not. But I will tell you that they, in fact, exist. 
And that is why we had this school shooting. I'm done pretending that all these people are just, they just want to be left alone and they just want to do their thing. Their ideology hinges on the fact, the idea that everyone around them has to conform to this ideology. Otherwise, it falls apart. As soon as someone disagrees with them, they are no longer what they are. Everyone has to believe that they are the opposite gender or a non-gender or a made-up gender. We have to start pushing back on this stuff. Because when we don't, people grow up to be like this. People grow up to positions of power. This is openly on Twitter. Now, he has since taken down, I assume it's a he. He has since removed any access to his account. There's no tracking this down. Again, we're saving receipts. You got to keep this stuff. We have to start pushing back. I'm done being silent. They seem to have no problems posting this on the social media accounts and these apps are not concerned with their obvious threats of violence their obvious calls to action that are not good for society and uh, potentially harmful to society none of these apps are taking them down that includes tiktok that includes twitter that includes instagram especially tiktok but when they think that we're the minority when they think that they are going to suffer more consequences from these people then they're going to side with them. But the thing is, when you're not quiet, when you're not silent, they won't think that because majority of people are not this insane. Perhaps predictably, the the bio of Pinko Scum says, I'm a communist, archaeologist, and writer. Archaeologist seems to be a random screwball in that equation, but communist, very predictable. All right, I've got one last unfortunate TikTok video to show you. Um, let's take a look at this uh, this lady who decided she would capitalize on this horrible incident to uh, get some clout. I wonder if the parents of the victims of the Nashville shooting today would still have their children if these trans bills in Tennessee were never a thing. I'm not a parent, but if I were, I'd be real, real mad at the government. I'd be real, real mad at the government. Well, there she is blaming legislation for the murder of children and teachers. Not the shooter. Legislation. She's blaming the people of Tennessee. Now, her last statement, I'm not a parent, I could guess without even hearing her say it. And uh, I would, I'm also willing to guess that she may never be a parent because who would want to have children with someone who cares that little about victims of a shooting? She took this time, this moment of horrible dread, took this moment to go onto TikTok and complain about legislation when there are people dead, took this moment to show a little more cleavage, took this moment to make a stupid point. We have to make fools of these people. We have to force them to defend their positions because their positions, in fact, are siding with the criminals. Perhaps this isn't the lighthearted content or the rather lighthearted take on things you're used to. But I'm a little mad. And I can tell you, if I were the a parent of one of these children, I would be a lot more angry, especially seeing the bile pouring out of these awful people online who don't give a rip about anyone who suffered any consequences from the ideolo- ideologies and the suffered at the hands of these criminals. I don't want to be talking about this. I don't think anybody wants to be talking about this. But it felt like an injustice not to bring it up, considering that I do talk about politics and news. Um, But that's really all I have to say about it. We need to stop being silent and compliant, because it perpetuates this garden of insanity that they're growing. And as we ignore it and watch it grow and pretend it's not there, it gets more and more obvious and more and more bold and invades the wholesome garden of the majority of society. We we got to speak up to these people. Kind of along the same notes, slightly going to shift away because I don't want to leave you off on a super heavy note. I realize this is heavy stuff and you probably don't want to think about this all the time. And it's good not to. So you want to, you want to not dwell on these things, especially when there's not a whole lot you can do about it. It unfortunately 
in almost a cruel way, life goes on. Along these notes, I have spent a lot of time working in customer service and a lot of time working in retail and just a lot of interactions with people who, let's just say, wish they were in a better spot. But during my time in food service, I I worked with a lot of single moms and they often liked to gossip about their kids and complain about how they don't listen to them, complain about what they're doing and complain about their personalities. I've even heard them say, I don't like my kids and, but I have to love them kind of thing. Yeah, this is, this is real stuff that happens. Um, but my wife was telling me about an interaction she had overheard at her workplace and, um, it, it might, um, blow your mind a little bit. So she was telling me this, um, actually just a few hours before I recorded the show and I figured I had to include it. So I think the takeaway for this topic will be to maybe not complain about our kids' choices when, in fact, you were the one that raised them and probably contributed the majority of why they're doing what they're doing, especially if they're still living in your house. You do have the power to change their course, change their direction, unless they are 26 years old. So here's a quote that my wife overheard at her workplace. Quote, I know you're going to keep making dumb mistakes because you're like 26. Excuse me, how old? If your kid is still making dumb mistakes at 26, then it might be a little late. And perhaps the fact that you're saying he's going to continue to make dumb mistakes is in fact perpetuating these dumb mistakes. If you tell him he's going to be doing dumb things, of course he's going to believe that as well as you. You have no faith in him. You've equipped him to this point to do what he does, and if he's doing dumb things, it's your fault. But he is an adult at this point, and you can tell him that he has control over his actions and that he should maybe not be an idiot. But again, if you're saying your kid is 26 and still talking about him as if he is a kid, then he is going to treat his own life as a kid's life. I'm only 28, and at 26, I was long done being a complete moron. Now, I'm still a little stupid, and we're, we're our own worst enemy, right? But 26 is an awfully old age to be still justified for any dumb things you do. That's something... I mean, you shouldn't be saying that to their face anyway, but if you're going to do it, maybe do it at like 16 to 18. 26 is far beyond the excuse time. You're no longer a young teenager. In fact, you're already at the point where you should be contributing to society and thinking about what you want to do with your life before you're middle-aged. If you're not contributing at this point, I'm sorry to say your parents did not set you up well. Now, it's very contradictory to... Uh, a lot of the leftist ideology, you may remember last week I brought up Peggy Flanagan, who gave us the parenting advice of listening to our children, quote, and believing them. It's our responsibility, she said. Now, this is in reference to, you know, minor age children. We want them to have control of, or rather, we want them to determine their sex or their gender against what their biological sex is. But when they're 26 years old and being complete idiots, we don't want to allow them the responsibility or we don't give them the fault of anything they do at 26. But we want 12 year olds and 10 year olds to decide their genders. Seems a little contradictory to me. On a similar note, Penny Flanagan was in fact photographed wearing a t-shirt that said protect trans kids with a knife symbol on it. Yet another call to violence from trans activists. But it's no wonder things like this happen when our culture is so deluded that we tell our kids to their face that they're going to make mistakes and essentially that they can't get better, they're incapable of being better, and it doesn't seem to matter if they're nearing 30. In fact, everything they do is excused, including shooting people. If you're in a certain group, Everything you do is excused, according to the left. It's high time we start pushing back on these ridiculous, insane things that people say around us 
I'm talking in the workplace. I'm talking socially. When someone talks about their 26-year-old kid doing dumb things and their reaction is, well, you're just going to do dumb things because you're only like 26, our reaction should be, excuse me, how old? Excuse me? So maybe together we can make people realize how ridiculous this is and that, in fact, the majority of people do not agree with you. I'm praying and hoping and believing that that is still the majority. The majority is still sane. I have hope. But they won't know that if we don't speak up. We have to speak up. Our silence in this stuff, they're just going to assume you agree with them if you give them zero pushback. And you don't have to be a jerk. You don't have to go punch someone in the face. You don't have to threaten them or anything. Like these, uh, these trans activists are telling people to do to enact their ideologies. You don't have to do that. Just a simple statement that pushes back against what they're saying. That's all I'm asking. So I guess that's the main takeaway here. I started this show because I was done being silent about this stuff, and that forced me to talk about what happened on Monday. It forces me to talk about our culture, our workplaces. We have to speak up. So that's my takeaway today. Frankly, I wanted to do more this week. Um, I wanted a little more lightheartedness, but it felt like a disservice to those in Nashville to implement any humorous content. I do have a skit that will be still relevant next week, so you can look forward to that. But I didn't want to include it this week because I wanted to honor those lost and not to dishonor anyone involved. I also don't want to devalue thoughts and prayers. I know people make fun of that. But in fact, when I'm way over here and they're way over there, my prayers are really all I can do. And my prayers and my heart does go out to these these poor people that suffered a horrible tragedy from the hands of an insane trans activist. But that's my two cents on the whole matter, folks. I'm Jake Critcher. This is Jake's Takeaway. I'll see you next week.